Hello, ladies and gentlemen of YouTube. I am Clementon, and as always, I am Super Saiyan, but never mind that. In this video, I'm gonna rip the guts out of a humbucker, take the magnet out, start swapping it. But you already seen this video on YouTube a hundred times, right? The humbucker magnet video. Well, that's why in this video, I'm gonna test the sound of a thick ceramic magnet versus a thin ceramic magnet. Then we'll compare that to the sound, a thin Allen and Cole P90 magnet. And while we're at it, we'll throw an N94 neodymium bar in there and show an example of and give my thoughts on why I think uh, neodymium pickups originally got a bad rap in the first place. Throw all these in a testing mule guitar, plug it into a high-low mic 412 with a healthy amount of gain. I will show and explain this entire process in detail, including a whole bunch of nerdery. So, if this sounds like something you might be interested in, STAY TUNED! Roll that beautiful bean footage. This object is a humbucker from an Epiphone Les Paul Jr. It's super overwound, almost 20k, and has a super strong C8 magnet in it. So, if you play in mod guitars, you probably have some stuff like this laying around. Why not start swapping magnets around and Frankenstein your way to the Tony? Even do this with the pickup still in the guitar, soldered into position if you just take out the whole ring like what I have right here. And in almost every case, you can do all the stuff in the rest of this video with one screwdriver. But if you have the extra fancy, expensive, cheap-ass sounding pickups, you can get one of these little screwdriver and bit kits for a dollar at the dollar store. So first thing to do is use a screwdriver to remove the pickup from the pickup ring. Next you flick the pickup over and you loosen up the four coil screws. And like I said before, you don't even have to remove the pickup from a guitar to do this as long as you don't pull on that uh, tether too hard. And you don't always have to take the screws completely out of the back plate to change the magnet, but the first time you probably will as it'll be all stuck together with wax. Next thing to do is kind of look at the pickup real close and look up in under that uh, pickup tape right in between the coils and kind of poke around there and lift it up see I was trying to push the magnet out because I knew which side had the leads in but what you're looking for is you want to see where the leads are and how long they are and what can happen up in there without ripping those leads loose and once I fold it open you can see exactly why I said what I said now you have the coils and the magnet on the left and the back plate and the spacers on the right but those spacers looked like rubber magnets or ceramic magnets to me so I had to check them with a uh, compass just to make sure because this was a extremely hot pickup and nope they are non-magnetic just plastic spacers that happen to look like magnets <laughs> so next thing I did was take a utility knife and go to scoring this wax from around this magnet and the reason there is this wax everywhere is because they wax pot these pickups which just means dip it in melted wax when apparently it was already assembled which is the way I would do it as it glues everything together including the coil which is the point keep the magnet from being able to move around and vibrate when a loud speaker is played to it then that signal will go back to that amp and speaker and it will come out and go into that pickup and vibrate it and around and around until that loud squealing sound we all know about anyway you can use a flathead or something like that to just pry the magnet right up off of there so now if you want to make this thing sound like some uh, vintage super expensive alnico unicorn magic pickup you just slap a magnet in it that you can get on ebay for two to four dollars and then you put it all back together put the screws where they came from and depending on sheer dumb luck or possibly careful and informed magnet selection you may have just created a tone monster <laughs> so speaking of magnet selection here's a magnet you can tell by the black color that this is a ceramic magnet, and this uh, particular magnet is a C8 ceramic magnet. This is the most commonly used magnet in any humbucker or P90 that is under the Tone Lawyer price range. Lots of YouTube videos that show the difference in the sound between the C3, C5, C8 different uh, strengths of ceramic magnets. I'm looking to do something different here today. This is a thick C8 uh, ceramic magnet commonly found in humbuckers. I want to see if it sounds different than a thinner magnet of the same exact grade that you often find in a P90. And while we're testing P90 magnets, let's throw an Alnico P90 magnet in there. Alnico also comes in grades. This one happens to be an Alnico 5. You can identify these by the shiny silver color. 
these are the ones that are used in all the old timey expensive bass guitars and the super expensive boutique pickups nowadays. Although this one is sawn from a billet and the most desirable expensive ones are sand casted and they have a rough outside appearance. So let's try that against the one that people say sounds the absolute worst. The super shiny neodymium N94 magnet. They'll smash your fingers. And I think I really gained some valuable insight on exactly why everybody thinks that they're terrible. Anyway, let's chuck this dude in the testing mule guitar. Start doing the demos and then swapping the magnets and doing the demos and swapping the magnets. Nothing fancy, guitar straight to the head, the head straight to the cab, cab to the mics and mics straight into the interface. That's enough jabbering. Let's get it on! Okay, to some people, these findings may be completely in line with exactly what they expected. To some other people, they may be like, there's not much difference in between any of those examples. It's kind of like turning the mids knob up and down on an amp. And I agree with you, there's not all that much difference with this exact setup. However, this particular test blew my mind and made me see the light so to speak in many different ways and i've been trying to formulate a way to explain my findings for about two days now since i started messing with pickups on this channel i have been doing experiments with pickups on this channel and pretty much figuring out that everything i ever read in forums all the stuff that the old guys told me it was all incorrect. I was getting exact opposite results from everything that I was told my whole life or read or anything. And most of the time I'm using a very high headroom, super sterile amp. When I needed breakup, I'd use an overdrive pedal or I would just use like a Fender style amp, like this 5F1 Tweed circuit. <laughs> And in all these instances, more magnet was more bass and more volume. But clearly in this test, more magnet strength was trending toward more treble. Well, this is exactly whatever Guitar Dude Forum and all of our uncles that used to work in a studio and everybody's a cousin's brother's nephew's grandpa that used to work for Molly Hatchet as a roadie. I've done the test, man. It's not worth your time. Alnico is warmer than ceramic. And those neodymium magnets sound harsh and horrible. 
Well, I have to agree in this case. That's for two reasons. The flat side of neodymium pickups is most often the strong side of the magnet, making it better for use in single coil pickups. Another problem is that the size is just much too small. It doesn't effectively fill the space in between the two coils, so it shakes around in there and picks up a lot of microphonics. You can get around this by using the slug style bobbins and stacking the magnets under the bobbin. So don't discount neodymium. It can be used to make great pickups. It just has to be used correctly. Now, why was the Alnico warmer than the ceramic? And why was the thicker ceramic more raw and more trebly than the thin ceramic? One major contributing factor is most likely humbucker pickups. They have two coils that are magnetically out of phase with each other. So the more stronger of a magnet you put in there, the more out of phase they are. Back in the day, most single coil pickups just had flat work fiber bobbins, magnetic slugs in them. You couldn't change those, you just break the pickup. And another eye opener that explains a ton to me is that the fact that this recording and test rig is very much more similar to what they would be using back in the day. First thing is no overdrive pedal. I'm plugged straight into the amp and these are the settings that I use for the entire test. Yes, the gain is only at about 60%, but the reason it sounds like it's ripping is because the volume's also at about 40%. So about bedroom volume, right? No, not quite. <laughs> Yes, this amp is only 10 watts, but it's all about the sensitivity of this 360 watt cabinet. These 8 ohm 80 watt Celestion and Ruby speakers from the 90s have a sensitivity of about 98 to 101 decibels of sound pressure at 1 watt measured at 1 meter. So even though the interaction in the cabinet could possibly make it a lot more sensitive and louder, especially in the bottom end, we'll just call them 98 decibels per watt. And the volume on this 10 watt amp is about 40%. So let's say it's putting out about two watts then turning the gain up to 60 percent is going to add a couple decibels then you're going to use a pickup with a super strong magnets in it that's going to add a couple decibels so if i say 98 decibels of sensitivity on this cabinet plus 3 db for the gain turned up 60 percent and then plus 5 db for the pickup being wired straight in and having a super high resistance that puts us at exactly 106 decibels that's roughly the same volume as an orchestra or like a race bike according to the national institute for occupational safety and health the maximum safe exposure time at 106 decibels is about 3.75 minutes so i'd say we're getting some speaker breakup out of this cabinet and that these uh high low mic situation uh with a Shure 57 is picking that up perfectly and clearly. And once again, this is exactly the same way it would have been done 30, 40 years ago. So with this old school symbiotic system here of like a slightly microphonic humbucker that has wound up the wazoo like an old DiMarzio, going straight into a head with a Marshall style tone stack, using the volume as you break up more than your gain into an angle 412 with high wattage celestians like back in the day, like maybe a G12 75T. Then with a 421 and a 57, stronger magnet will give you more treble the way that we were all always told. So for the first time on this channel, when using humbuckers and speaker breakup, myth confirmed. Well guys, that just about does it for this video. If you found this educational or entertaining in any way, please like and maybe subscribe. Next time's P90s. Anything specific you'd like to see, put it in the doobly-doo down below. Till next time.